Did you find a letter this morning? I am barely awake, but I got post. In this episode, Aladino finds a spear gun tied to our anchor chain, and he spends all day learning how to use it. I'm Aladino. I'm both Swiss and Italian, and a boat builder by profession. And I'm Maya, a Canadian artist and sailor. This is our home, Magic Carpet. She's a Vinda 32, though she's only 28 feet long. And four years ago, she fell 20 feet off a crane onto concrete. Insurance wrote her off, but Aladino bought her, fixed her, and now she's our home. Our mission? To sail around the world as slowly as possible. something secret I want to tell you. Aladino is out swimming right now, so I thought I'd take the opportunity. So yesterday morning, Aladino was still asleep, and I took the dinghy to town, and I went to the fishing store, and I bought Aladino a proper spear gun. He's been really wanting to get into spear fishing, and his birthday is coming up, and uh, he made himself a Hawaiian sling out of an old antenna that we found in a dumpster, um, but I thought maybe he would want a proper spear gun to learn on. So I got him one, but it's a surprise. And I have a, just a small sort of like scavenger hunt planned out for tomorrow morning. And I'm going to tie the spear gun to our anchor chain so that he has to jump into the water to go find it at the end of the short little scavenger hunt. So tomorrow morning when he wakes up, I'm going to give him a letter and then we'll see what happens. Did you find a letter this morning? I am barely awake, but I got post. <laughs> this is certainly to me. To the Great Pistol Shrimp. To Pistol Shrimp. I don't know who else know me around here. Hello Pistol Shrimp. Good job. You're awake. You're about to be even more awake. Mm. Grab your swim shorts, goggles, and then go to the bow pulpit. Your next instructions are there. What does it say? The anchor chain points the way. Here comes the Great Pistol Shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> I think he found it. Ta da! The pistol shrimp has his pistol. Wow. Awesome. Oh, this is a good thing to have aboard. Thanks so much, babe. You're welcome. After receiving such an exciting gift, Aladino of course wanted to try it out, so we decided to head to a new anchorage. We spent a few really nice nights here on Isla di Volcano, but now we're gonna go spend a night, I think, anchored on Lipari, which is the neighboring island. Um, however, it's not exactly gonna be a very long journey. It's just I don't even know if it's a full nautical mile around the corner, but there's a really cool looking anchorage that we passed when we were coming in. It looks very remote, surrounded by steep cliffs, and it's got a good sandy bottom, so uh, we're gonna go check that out and spend the night there. So once again, we lifted the anchor and headed towards another new and beautiful place. So I think we will just be motoring there. However, fortunately, I think it'll only take like 15 minutes to get there. It's not very far. These towering rocks like ancient pillars reminded me of photos I've seen from other places far away. This entire archipelago of volcanic islands sometimes feels as if it's somewhere else, the South Pacific or some other remote and ruggedly beautiful locale. The only time I'm reminded that we're still in the Mediterranean is when I visit the small towns and taste the gelato produced there. Mesmerized by the landscape, we started searching for a sandy spot to anchor and go exploring. I think there's a patch of sand right over there where it's lighter blue, do you see? All right, here we are, safely anchored in this very, very impressive anchorage. 
And it's so amazing, cliffs this tall and yet still sand to anchor in. That's incredible. So what's on the agenda now? Um, well, I'm excited about my spear gun. So Aladino just jumps into the water to test out his new spear gun for the first time, and I'm going to jump in with him and film what happens. Are you excited? Yeah. There's quite a few jellyfish in the water, though, hey? Yeah. I don't see any right now, but okay. as long as we have our masks and we can watch out for them. The camera, but there's a little jellyfish right there. But if I jump clear, I should be fine. In the coming weeks, I was about to get very well acquainted with these Mediterranean pink jellyfish. But unfortunately that day, I got my first introduction to them shortly after jumping in, when I brushed against one with my finger. These jellies have a very painful sting that can leave raised welts for weeks after, and I immediately jumped out of the water to apply some cooling gel. They're not dangerous, the ones here, but they really sting you. It's like a bee sting. So now my finger's all swelling up and I'm all shaky from the shock of it. So I don't think I'm going to go back in. But Aladino's out there and he's uh, spearfishing and hopefully, hopefully keeping an eye out for them because there's so many of them here. We really noticed them when we were coming in and putting the anchor down. There was just tons floating around. I've wanted to start spearfishing for a long time now, so now that I finally had a spear in my hands, the excitement kicked in. I spotted a few groupers, but they were always aware of me ahead of time and disappeared into their tunnel system, often not to be found later anymore. The other bigger species I saw were even harder to get because they seemed to be very afraid of humans and quickly swam away from a big distance already. I do forget about time during dives, but getting cold brings me back to reality. I was out for a while and knowing that I was getting out soon to get warm made me feel disappointed. Alright, I'm over the shock of the sting now, but I still don't really feel like getting back into the water. But I'm very curious how Aladino is making out, so I'm going to jump into the dinghy and go see what's going on. Hey Amore! Hi. How's it going? Good. What sad story. Sad? Yes, I what? got a sea bass. What? I did. And then uh, I realized I don't have a rope or a knife because it was not a headshot on the first try, so he wasn't dead. It was just his body. And then while I was swimming to the rock to uh, get a grip and uh, get him off, he uh, escaped. No! Oh, so sad! And now I was hanging out for a while to see if I could find him again, but I think he survived and disappeared. Let's see, but I was coming back, I'm getting cold. Okay, do you want to ride back? After that sad story, we both decided to hop into the dinghy and go sightsee a little bit. This area is filled with stunning rock formations. So just over there, there's a cave, which is what all the other boats are going to go check out. And so we're going to follow. The archway had just enough water running through it to allow our dinghy to pass through safely. The cool shade and breeze wafting through the tunnel was heavenly. The temperature in the sun was over 35 degrees, so a moment of cool respite was quite welcome. After emerging from the shade, we headed towards one of the sharp rock formations we had passed earlier. Yep. Are you on the bottom? Yep. Perfect. Jellyfish, are there any? Okay, here I go then. The rock cliff plunged straight down to the seafloor. Tiny, dark-colored damselfish gathered around in their usual clouds, moving in hypnotic patterns. Aladino swam slowly along, but we didn't see any fish which could be a potential meal.
Okay, well that was short-lived. I was in the water for like five minutes and then I saw a jellyfish behind Aladino. And then I started looking around a little bit more carefully and when you really look, they were just everywhere. There were so many of them. And they're hard to see because a lot of them are really small and kind of translucent. And there's so many fish everywhere that they sort of just blend in. But once I started focusing and looking for them, I could see them everywhere. And I was like, I'm out. I don't want a second jellyfish sting. But Aladino's still there. So I'm going to pull the anchor up and follow him in the day. We returned to the boat, but Aladino was determined. It was his first day owning a proper spear gun, and all he wanted was to bring home a fish. So as the sun began to sink, we headed out once again in pursuit of a fish. Wow, look at that view. Wow. Getting into the water isn't my favorite part, since I have lots in common with reptiles and my body refuses cold like a cat the wet, but I was still determined to go again before sunset. The cold water is always quickly forgotten because I'm fully engulfed and hypnotized by the underwater worlds. The dark deep water and the unknown habitat cover me and reality like a big blanket as I begin my chase. I try to be part of that world, trying to understand the fish, their thoughts, and their next move. I was in hunt mode, calm and fully concentrated as you have to be underwater. After a while, fish circled around me as if I wasn't there or I had become part of it, and a less lucky parrotfish became my first catch on that day. First day owning a spear gun and he catches us dinner! Yay. So we're gonna make Mexican style tortillas. Happy Dini! Awesome gift, nice spear gun. Yeah. And I get dinner out of it, so it works out well for me too. Well, for me as well. And look at this paradise anchorage. What else? Did you see any other interesting sea life while you were so down there? So many things. I saw a cute, tiny little moray that was already behaving like a big one. I, I fail to see how a moray eel can be cute, but okay. <laughs> well, just the size, because yeah. I've seen only big ones so far, and that one was literally, yeah, like the finger in Aww, diameter. That is kind of cute. And it stuck out of the rock, but it already had those horrifying looking teeth. <laughs> and then. It showed me the jaw and I poked it a little bit and it was a fun interaction. <laughs> and also I saw a few sea bass and they're this tiny, so cute, but they're already just like the big ones. Exactly the same expression and jaw and everything, but just in small, very cute. And also I saw another one of those crabs I told you about last time. They're all covered in seaweed and first you think it's a bush of seaweed but then they start walking in a symmetric <laughs> way with their... It's like in those cartoons where the people walk by with the bush on them as if that's yeah. camouflage, you know? <laughs> so funny. So I don't... Yeah, if it's a type or if they just learned to camouflage them. Ah, it literally looks like it grows on them, so I don't hmm. know. It, and it doesn't seem like to grow in every kind of crab. Yeah. Anyway, that was fun. Then I saw a green fish, which I've never seen before. It was kind of longer and slim, but green. Hmm. Cool. That was cool. What else did I see? Um, oh, well, that um, anemone thing that was weird. Okay. Because it was like long tentacles, about this long. Yeah. And dark purple. And as soon as I touched them, they retrieved completely into the hmm. rock somewhere. So the, the, the part is always hidden under a rock. So just like a super long anemone. Yeah, that was super cool. Funny. What else? Yeah, that was about it. Nice. And dinner! And fish. I'm so amazed. What kind of fish did you get? Um, it's a parrotfish. Okay. Yeah. So I remember you caught a few of those when we were in Baja. In Baja, yeah. There I got a nicer size though. This one's good for two, um, but yeah, with the depths I can go to now and... Uh, well, and also the Mediterranean is known for not yeah. having the most fish. I mean, if you're a badass Spiro, 
which I'm not yet. Um, you can get pretty good fish, but you have to be lucky. Yeah. But yeah, I think the one that I got today, you see those more often. Amazing. Love you. <laughs> Love I'm you. so stoked. The first day with a spear gun. Only Dini. What a wonderful feeling. Fresh fish, a sunset view, and a cozy boat. Thank you all so much for watching, and an extra big thank you to our patrons for making these episodes possible. And an extra extra thank you to these folks who go above and beyond every week to help us out. Thank you so much everyone, we'll see you next week. <laughs>